When I was growing up as a child, I experienced so many discipline from my parents, whether it is a spanking on my behind, <laughs> or whether it's no TV for one day, or no going out playing for three days because I did something wrong, or I made a bad choice, or whether it's washing dishes or cleaning the toilet at home, or whether it's in school where, where the teacher or the principal will require me to do something because I lied or I cheated or I stole something or broke something or I disrespect, disrespected the rules or I was rude to an authority figure. I, I remember the principal requiring us to clean the entire school garden, clean the toilets because we did something wrong. Discipline. When I was growing up, I was resentful, I was angry, I was complaining. Ano ba yan? Bakit ba kami pinagagawa nito? We are resisting discipline. Many, many years later, now I realized that those corporal punishment and those act of discipline, whether you agree with it or not, brought out something good in me. Today, I will have second thoughts about cheating or lying, or stealing. Discipline does something good in us. But it's not always happy and fun and pleasurable. So this morning, we'll be talking about that. The power of discipline. What does discipline do to our character? So today's reflection is about tough love. Why discipline is good for us. Why discipline is good for our character. As fathers, we may need to take note as parents, as coaches, as teachers, as pastors, and as mentors, particularly fathers. How does discipline participate in the maturing and the sharpening and the growing of character in our lives? And so there are at least three responses when people discipline us, when fathers discipline us, diba? When, when authorities or teachers or coaches discipline us. First, we are dismissing it. Oh, that's nothing. Oh, I, it's, it's not needed. Or there will be times when we are in despair. Oh, this is hard. I cannot do it anymore. And sometimes discipline can be, we can have despise. So the, the book of Hebrews talks about those three responses. We dismiss it as light. The Bible says don't dismiss God's discipline as something light or unimportant. Or we despise it as something bad or evil. The Bible invites us to understand, to see discipline, to see hardships and suffering, to see pain in a different light. And that is tough love. But first let's ask, what is tough love, Pastor Mike? When does tough love happen? You see, tough love refers to, to a painful moment when you love someone because you know that that kind of difficulty or suffering or discipline is good for the person. For example, if you have a son who is, a 30 year, is now 30-year-old, who's still unemployed, still sleeps in your house, does not contribute anything, <laughs> Sometimes, tough love is not giving him money. Go and find a job. Sometimes, if he, he is renting a condo or an apartment and he would keep asking you for his rent or for his electric bill or for his internet or cell phone load, sometimes tough love is just stopping. Go find your own source of income. That's tough love. Tough love is when we... Uh, it's, an, it's an approach in parenting. It's an approach in fathering when we set boundaries. When you have an addicted son, when you have an addicted daughter to gambling, to alcohol, to drugs, or to any bad habit that damages his life or his family, you stop bailing him out. You stop rescuing him and you allow him to suffer the consequences. That's tough love. Somebody once said, tough love is about addressing truly harmful behavior when someone is hooked on something that is damaging, addictive, destructive, 
or a habit that is really, really bad for his success. Tough love is also about teaching self-confidence, that you can be responsible and not be dependent on people and not be disturbing others for your needs. Tough love is also about knowing your boundaries and your responsibilities that you don't have to bully others or bash others or or depend on others or disturb others' lives for your sake. Tough love is also about teaching truth with compassion. Truth hurts, but we need to hear it. Discipline hurts, but we need it in our lives. I remember when I was uh, growing up as a high school student, I really don't want to wake up early in the morning to go to school. Grabe. Mantika ho ako matulog. <laughs> so, I will always ask my mom to set an alarm for me. So my mom will be my alarm clock. He, she will knock on my door. She will touch me on the feet. Gising na, Mike. You wake up. It's, you will be late in school. So my mom would do that for me. He will rescue me so that I will not be late in school. Every day, kawawa naman ho ang nanay ko. Ano? Tagagising ng anak na mantika magtulog. One day, my mom decided to do tough love. So she decided to not wake me up anymore. Mike, I will not wake you up anymore. You wake up on your own. You're already an adult. <laughs> you are now, you know, grade 10. You're fourth year high school. Ano ba? Gumisi ka mag-isa. And so, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm still sleeping. 7.30 in the morning, I'm still sleeping. And the class starts at 7.30. 7.45, 8 o'clock, I'm still sleeping. I was so, when I woke up, 8.30, and I was late. I got demerits. I got punishment from the teacher and all the reprimand and rebuke and whatnot. <laughs> and so my mom taught me tough love. Ever since that day, I never woke up late ever again. That's tough love. Sometimes, tough love does that. It invites us to a higher behavior, a better value, and greater responsibility. And many times, the Bible depicts that kind of fatherly love and fatherly discipline to God's discipline and God's love as well. And so today, we'll talk about that. Remember, a good father corrects his children when they make bad choices or foolish decisions. That's what a father does. As a good father, you correct what is wrong and what is foolish. So when hardship or trials enter our lives, it's the same with God. It's because sometimes God disciplines us because we are His children. Amen? Discipline teaches us to be wise. It tells us that we are loved, that God cares about our life. And it discipline trains us to have good character as well. So why is discipline good for our character? Why is discipline from a father good for us? First, discipline teaches us to learn wisdom. The Bible is replete, filled with passages and instructions, particularly from Solomon's advices to the young, a father's advice to, to his child. Wisdom, you choose wisdom. Kapag ka daw tayo ay dinidisiplina, tinutuwid, tinatama, we become Wiser, nagiging marunong sa buhay. You notice children who grew up foolish and who make unwise decisions and stupid mistakes. They end up becoming bullies and disrespectful of rules. They are the ones who never went through any form of rebuke or correction or discipline. So we welcome, the Bible teaches us to welcome discipline. It's not happy now or fun at the moment, but in the future, we become wiser beings. We become better humans. We become excellent people. That's why Proverbs 15 says, whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. It's not always happy, but it makes you better. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Ah, this is beautiful. Ano? When we... Welcome discipline, whether it's from a father, from a mother, from a coach, from a teacher, or whether it is from God. Lord, 
I need discipline. I need correction. I need rebuke. I need painful but beautiful training. Ah, and that is how the Bible speaks about discipline. It's unpleasant for now. So discipline is always looking for the future. But the future promises something more better than what we go through for the meantime. That's why Proverbs 13 also says, Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame. Nako, mamumulubi ka. Lalaki kang mahirap kung wala kang disiplina kasi wala kang wisdom. But whoever heeds correction is honored. Oh, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fool suffers harm. So that is why we need discipline in our lives. Because wisdom is the promised future. Not yet, not now. For the meantime, we go through hardship and suffering and pain. That's what the present looks like. It's filled with discipline and training and rebuke and correction. But the future is better. So sometimes those who endure hardship, ooh, those who appreciate discipline, are those who understand what the future looks like. I'll be a wiser person. I'll be a humbler person. I'm a, I will be a more virtuous human being because of what God allows me to go through. Because of my, my, what my dad allows me to suffer for now. Because of what my coach or my teacher allows me to endure for the meantime. That's why Proverbs 13 also says, A wise son accepts his father's discipline, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. And that is what discipline does to our character. We become wise. We become humble. We are open to rebuke and we listen to correction. Proverbs 19.20 also says, Listen to, to counsel, accept discipline, that you may be wise the rest of your days. This is a prelude to the book of Hebrews because the author of the book of Hebrews also quoted the book of Proverbs to reinforce the reality that Christians need to go through discipline so that we have character formation, so that we become like Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews also alludes to the importance of discipline given by a father to a son. So discipline is about the future rather than the present, and it leads us to a vision, a better vision of ourselves. A better vision of who God wants us to become. And many times, that is the antidote to all our addictions and our bondages. One layer of my healing and my freedom from pornography and my other addictions is this casting of a vision of the future. What kind of life, what kind of ministry, what kind of character do I want to be remembered for in the future? What kind of of quality of marriage and family do I want? And so sometimes the future impacts the present when we understand God's plan and God's heart and God's vision for us. Isn't that amazing? Ano? When we understand na, hey, I cannot live like this forever. I cannot have this garbage in my life for the rest of my life. I cannot have this habit or this attitude or this arrogance or this character or behavior anymore. I need discipline. I need training. So discipline is not just about punishing the wrong, although it does that. Discipline is not just about enduring suffering and the consequences of our mistakes and, and foolishness, although it includes that. But discipline also is about removing sin in our lives. Whoa! It's also about dismantling arrogance in our lives. Boom! It also, it's also about overhauling the garbage in our minds and in our hearts. Kaya kung ang yabang-yabang mo ang sama-sama ng ugali mo, pinapadaan ka ng Diyos 
sa pagpapalo, sa pagtutuwid. Woo! And that is how the wise welcomes discipline. I need this in my life. Which brings us to the book of Hebrews. The second important quality of discipline, what it does to our character is this. Discipline tells us that we are loved deeply. Huh? When you go through a form of suffering, a form of hardship, whether it's from a father or from God, it signals to us that you are loved. Kapag ka itinutuwid ang mali mo, pag itinatama yung masama mong ugali, ibig sabihin, someone loves you and cares enough to speak truth that hurts because you are loved. Oh! That means, in the presence of discipline, it's an evidence that you belong to the love of a father. Why? Because love does not delight in evil. That's 1 Corinthians 13. Love is not happy with sin. No human father will celebrate a son's addiction or condone or support someone's bad habits or foolish behavior. Love does not do that. Pwede ba yun? Your son comes home, 2 o'clock in the morning, drunk with alcohol, high on shabu, and you welcome him and say, I love you, anak. Good job. You are doing excellent. Keep it up. That's not love. Love is angry at foolishness. Love is not happy with sin. Love does not delight in evil. And that is why God also expresses not only mercy and favor and blessing, God expresses discipline as well. There is such a thing as the wrath of God. There is such a thing as the rebuke of God. There is such a thing as the correction of God. And that is going to hurt. Pag pinapalo ka ng Diyos, makinig ka. Pag tinatama ka ng Diyos, umayos ka. Yan, no? Discipline does that to us. That's why the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 says, Do not resent it. Huwag ka magtampo. When God disciplines and corrects you, for His discipline is proof of His love. You want proof of God's love? Love ba ako ng Diyos? Di yata ako mahal ni Lord. Sabi the Bible says, the proof of God's love is He disciplines you. He corrects you. He rebukes you. He straightens you out. Just as a father corrects a son, he delights in... So when, when, when a father delights in his son, I love my son. This is the son that I take pleasure. I delight in him. The Bible says, He wants to make him better. He wants to improve his character, and that is painful. So the Lord corrects you. Let me ask you a personal question, something to think about. Is the Lord disciplining you? The Bible says, that is the proof of love. When God hurts me, because He loves me, something to, to wrestle with. Huh? He hurts me enough to correct me because He cares about my future. He cares about what I will become. You see, there are three words, three words for the word discipline that was used in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. The first word was, I will not mention it anymore, but, but it's, it's the word for Paideia, it's the word for training. It's the word used for clashing. It's the word used for correcting, training, equipping. But it's painful because it's the word used for sharpening. Have you ever sharpened a knife? Sparks would fly. That's the first word used for discipline in Hebrews 12. Paideia, it means to sharpen. 
through training. The second word used was elenko. It's the word for rebuke. It's verbal. It's like, you're wrong. Stop it. You will destroy your marriage. Tigilan mo yan, pare. Hiwalayan mo yan. Mawawasak ang marriage mo. That's a verbal rebuke. Stop that. That will destroy your life. It will destroy your career. It will destroy your future. That's rebuke. Tigilan mo nga yan. Don't be like that. That's a rebuke. Elenko. And the final one was physical. It's mastigo. It's scourging. It's the bang. That's the whipping. <laughs> That's Hebrews 12. A father does that too. Anak, umayos ka. Mali yan. Don't lie. Stop that. Stop cheating. That's discipline. Very interesting. Hebrews 10 talks about Christ enduring hardship for the sake of love. Hebrews 11 talks about a list of saints, a list of heroes of faith who endured hardship even though they did not receive the promise. They endured hardship. Hebrews 12. You endure hardship because it produces something beautiful and good. Don't give up. Don't despise. Don't dismiss. Don't resent when God disciplines. Wag kang magtatampo pag pinapalo at inaayos ng Diyos ang ugali mo. He's doing something. This is tough, huh? Because our, our idea of love is warm and cheesy and corny and mushy and sweet and nice and this good feeling. Hug all the time and kiss all the time. Our notion of love is never about someone giving you pain. So you become better. It's the picture of a coach requiring 100 push-ups per day. It's the picture of a trainer requiring 3,000 pages to read so you become brilliant. It's the picture of a dad who requires you to follow and obey so you become wise. That's amazing love. It's called tough love. And that is why Hebrews 12, 7 to 9 says, as you endure divine discipline, wow, that's an amazing term. Huh? Remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? Meron bang anak na hindi dinidisiplina ng anak? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Baka hindi ka anak ng Diyos, hindi ka pinapalo ng Diyos. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirits and live forever? Because the common reaction when we are disciplined, either by our earthly father, our coaches, our teachers, our trainers, or even our heavenly father, the common reaction is, why? Why all this pain and hardship and the suffering? The better question is, Lord, what are you teaching me? Lord, I'm going through this difficult time. I'm going through this time of hardship. I'm going through this suffering. I'm going through this form of rebuke and correcting. Lord, what are you teaching? What are you correcting in me? That's a better question instead of, why me? Don't you love me? I know it's difficult. There's no silver bullet response to this. Why do I have cancer, Lord? Why is my business going down? Why is my family breaking apart? Why am I going through this sickness? Why am I going through this difficulty? There's no clear-cut, one-size-fits-all answer, right? But the Bible encourages us to consider that maybe, maybe, that discipline is forming something good in us. The passage tells us that illegitimate children are not disciplined, but those who are loved by the Father, yung mahal ng tatay, yun yung pinapalo, 
at dinidisiplina at tinatama, tinutuwid. I remember one time I was in the mall and there were, you know, children who will do tantrums, who will throw stuff at their yaya and who will shout at their moms and who will, you know, bully and bash the sales ladies and just make a mess and me as a father, I will control myself, ano, parang papaluwin ko na to. Diba? <laughs> Kainis ah. But they're not my children eh. I can only discipline and correct and rebuke my own child. And that is what Hebrews 12 is talking about. If you are a legitimate child, kung anak ka talaga ng tatay mo, didisiplinahin ka niya. No, no earthly father. Maybe there are exemptions, but generally speaking, fathers who love their children will discipline their children. And this, this, this is the same with God. The love of God includes correcting and discipline. Rebuke. But to correct one's behavior is not to disown. It's different. It's different when we disown our children and hindi na kita anak. Wala na akong anak na ganyan. Kulit mo. The heart of God is not like that. So that's the contrast in the book of Hebrews. Our fathers, our earthly fathers are imperfect. Their love is temporary. Their love is conditional. But the father's love, it will never change. It will never stop. He will not stop loving you, but he will discipline you. That's the picture of who God is. So God loves us just the way we are, but He will not stop on just the way we are. He will improve the way we ought to be. Ah, that's good, huh? Tanggap ka ng Diyos, maging sino ka man, ano man ang kalagayan mo. Pero hindi siya tumitigil na ganyan ka na lang habang buhay. He will improve you. And that includes breaking. It's like God has a school. And the school's name is the school of brokenness. And very, 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 very few graduate in this school of discipline, in this school of brokenness. Kasi titigas ng ulo natin, tagal nating matuto. And so God will keep on allowing us to go through a curriculum of brokenness and a curriculum of correcting and a curriculum of purging and, and cleansing and dismantling of our arrogance. Kami naman pa, sumay, this is tough, this, this is tough. Kasi we never talk about the discipline and the painful scourging and refining of God. Most of the parents we know, very, very sad, no? they tolerate their children's bullying and their children's arrogance and their children's disrespect of rules and authority. Remember? Nakabaril na nga yan, anak mo, nakapatay, nakabangga, ikaw pa ang nakikipag-away, kayo pa malakas man loob. Magalit. Hello? Hi. Can you tap your seatmate? Ikaw ba yun? Is that you? Because our picture of love is that spoiled. And we're, hey guys, we're afraid of our children. When he, he does tantrums, no chocolate before lunch. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, here it is. Patay. Oh, no buying of toys today. It's not in the budget. It's not in the plan. <laughs> okay, okay, what do you want? No buy, huh? That's not love. When they, can man when they can manipulate us, when they can get what they want, they grow up being just that. No respect for boundaries. No respect for budgets. No respect for rules and authorities. No respect for other humans. Because our picture of love is, Sige na, sige na. Sayo na, lahat na. Gusto, ano pang gusto mo? I'm your slave, anak. I bow to your wishes. That's not love. 
So the writers of the book of Proverbs and the book of Hebrews gives that parallelism and contrast as well. As a father disciplines his child, so God disciplines his children as well. And that is a beautiful message to all of us that we welcome God's rebuke and God's correcting and God's refining and God's discipline as an earthly human father does that. Oh, Parenting 101, kailangan ng mga anak natin ang pagpapalo at pagtutuwid. Of course, we only do the spanking when they're young, but when they reach the age of 12, 13, 14, we don't spank them anymore. We talk. Good, painful conversations are good for the soul. Diba? Which brings us to number three. Discipline trains us to live rightly. So, can you help me with the clicker? <laughs> Ayaw, eh. <ayan. laughs> discipline, discipline trains us and leads us and guides us to right living and good behavior. Tinan niya to. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10 to 11 says, For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years. It's temporal. Because they die, we, you know, we don't live with them forever doing the best they know how. They're imperfect. Sometimes they make mistakes. That's our earthly fathers. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in His holiness. That's the goal. It's Christ-likeness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's not fun. It's gonna hurt when somebody strips you of your allowance, when you're not allowed to use your gadget for a meantime, you're, when you're not allowed to watch TV or to go out and play, when you're grounded for a few days, it's not fun, huh? It's difficult. When you are allowed to stay in a corner for a few hours because you misbehaved or you hurt someone or you disrespected an authority, diba? But the Bible says, it's painful. But afterward, ha, ah, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living. For those who are trained in this way. That's why Olympic athletes, they don't mind waking up three in the morning and running for kilometers after kilometers. They don't mind because the ending is a gold medal. They don't mind the push-ups and the diet, no Coke, no chocolate, no cake. For months, that's painful, huh? No chocolate, no, no ice cream, <laughs> no burger, no fry. But the ending is an Olympic trophy. That's a metaphor for Christian living. Yung binabaklas ng Diyos, yung pangit mong ugali. It's not fun. It's not pleasurable when we are being disciplined or chastised or corrected by God. But we welcome it because the ending is gold. The Bible says, it harvests right living. Nagiging tama ang buhay. Nagiging maayos yung marriage. Nagiging maganda yung negosyo. Nagiging tama yung relasyon sa mga tao. Nagiging banal yung buhay. Holiness. Christ-likeness. You pay the price. Discipline. Our salvation is free, but our holiness is painful. <laughs> and that is the Christian life. That's why Jerry Bridges once said, the purpose of God's discipline is not to punish us. He does not hate you. He loves you, in fact. But to transform us. Billy Graham also said, 
God does not discipline us to subdue us or to break us or to make us feel miserable. God disciplines us to condition us for a life of usefulness and blessedness. I have read a few weeks ago, no, the marshmallow e- experiment. Have you have you read it? There's a book, no? They came up with a book of this study in the 1960s of little children, preschool kids, about 500 of them in total in different parts of the of the globe, no? There's a marshmallow in front of them or a cookie. The instruction is if you do not if you discipline, if you control your appetite for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and not eat that cookie or not eat that marshmallow, you will be given twice the marshmallow in 20 minutes. Pag di mo kinain yan, do doble. So they are experimenting who's, which child will control, delay his appetite. So he can get a better reward afterwards. Oh, beautiful experiment. And so some children will, will control themselves. They will, they will not look at the marshmallow. They will, ah, mm, no, temptation, temptation, temptation. They will walk, they will dance, they will sing so that they will not be tempted. So half of the children, they ate. I don't care about the reward. Ow. Mm. Others, the half of them, they delayed, they controlled, they disciplined. <gasps> okay. After 20 minutes, they got another march. It became times two. And then this team of researchers kept track of every child who went through the experiment. Preschool, grade school, high school, college. They got married, they had business. They, they kept track of all the 500 children from different parts of the world. And this is what they found out. It's beautiful. Those who ate the marshmallow, preschool, ah, they ate the marshmallow and did not control their appetite, did not tame their passions, they did not, did not discipline their desires. They have broken marriages. They did not finish school. They have wrecked families. They have destroyed miserable lives. Addicted to drugs, addicted. They, did, they, cannot, they cannot say no to all the pleasures and the temptations. Ah, but those preschoolers who had the discipline to say no and wait, delay their gratification, they're engineers, doctors, successful company owners. They're summa cum laude. They have good marriages, good families. They have generally excellent lives. And that is the power of discipline. Remember, a good father corrects his children when they make bad choices or foolish decisions. So when hardship or trials enter our lives, it is because sometimes, not always, not all hardships come from the discipline of God. Sometimes it's demonic. Sometimes it's just your consequences to your mistakes. But sometimes God disciplines us because we are His children. Ah! Discipline teaches us to be wise, tells us we are loved, and trains us to have good character. Let me end. I have a friend, a pastor friend, who shared to me his personal journey. He grew up in a family whose idea of parenting and idea of love is no rules. Do you have that kind of family? No rules, no discipline. So it's like the extreme version of, okay lahat, pwede lahat. So he goes home three in the morning with the girl. Father says nothing. It's okay. He goes home from school drunk or addicted to gambling or just wasted, low grades, does not go to school, cut classes. Father says nothing. No spanking, no correcting, no penalty, no rebuke. So he grew up that way, no rules. Everything is allowed. 
So in the beginning, he was happy. It's like, wow, you know, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. I am allowed. You don't, you're not allowed to do, do drugs. I, my family is okay. You're not allowed to go home late. I can go home anytime I want. I can do whatever I want. And then he says, looking back, Mike, sabi niya, looking back, I resented my, my family. I resented my father for not standing in the way of my foolishness. Isn't that amazing? I said, my, my dad is so strict with me. Eh. Your dad is so maluwag, loose. It's like everything. And so he said, Mike, I hated my dad for not disciplining me, for not correcting me, and for, not, for not teaching me, and for not improving my behavior. He said he was angry because I ended up addicted. I ended up miserable. I ended up failing after f- failure after failure. He's a pastor today, but several years ago, he confessed he had an adultery, he had an affair. He has a child to another woman. He left his children and his wife. He left the ministry to be with the other woman. He's a pastor. He's famous. He taught me preaching. He taught the school. Every one of our graduates are excellent preachers because of him. Amazing, amazing man. Today, he's a UPS driver, delivery driver. And he says, I wish I received discipline. Whoa. That's why the Bible says, you do not resent when God disciplines you. When your teacher or coach or dad rebukes you or corrects you. It's not fun and happy and pleasurable now but the ending is gold wisdom right living the assurance that you are loved so today we talked about tough love why discipline is good for our character discipline teaches us to learn wisdom teaches us to live rightly and shows us that we are loved when somebody stops us from becoming foolish Let's pray. Let's all stand as we pray. Lord, we thank you. And we are grateful, Lord, for your encouragement and your rebuke and your reminder for us today that discipline is good for us. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We ask for humility. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to teach us and guide us in this journey called life. In Jesus' name, amen.